Hello guys, this is a review of the 2005 movie Crazy. Crazy is one of the best films of all time in my opinion. It follows the story of Zachary. I'm gonna call him Zach for short. He was born sometime in the 60s on Christmas Day. But from the first moment he was brought into this life, he was pronounced dead. So you could see um, the clear struggle that he's going to have to work with along the way throughout the whole entire film. They bring him back to life a few seconds later and then his brothers right here, they were obviously smaller and his dad walks in to, to see him. He starts carrying him, his dad, and then his brothers are like, let me see him, let me see him. They yank him so hard that he falls straight to the ground. So another another clear indicament of what the movie is going to be about. They fast forward to when he's like six or seven years old and he's at church. He's scratching the back of his head because he has a birthmark where he has like whitish, blondish hair in the back. And every time he scratches it, his dreams come true. Like whatever it is he really wants what? happens. Yeah. And um, <laughs> um, supposedly... By the way, this is a very long movie. It's like two hours, maybe a little bit over two hours. It's gonna be very hard for me to keep the same format that I do with other reviews where I speak almost scene to scene on things. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to really like um summarize it as best as I can and point out the few things that pop up to me as as I can remember them on the spot. Anyway, he He's growing up at that age. Everything seems to be going fine. He goes um, out with his dad to get fries. And that's like their little special moment. He doesn't have many problems. He has a few problems. And everything begins the moment that he dresses in his mother's robe. And wears um, her pearl necklace and earrings. And he's going over to a baby. The newborn baby. This little guy right here. Ivan is his name. And his dad walks in. He had already said goodbye through the window because he was going off to work. And like Zach was wearing his helmet, his workers like Bob the Builder helmet. But when his dad walks back, unbeknownst to Zach, he is over there wearing women's clothing. And from that moment on, as the character narrates, they declare war on each other. So everything that he does that's not manly enough. His father points out and he calls him soft and he doesn't mean or, or he calls him a fairy not directly but he insinuates that he's a fairy and there's even a scene where Zach asks his mom what's a fairy she's like oh nothing like don't pay attention to that just go back to sleep he pees his bed so he has like all these problems which <laughs> oof, oof, I'm, I'm gonna get into my personal story in a little while um he gets sent off to like something like the boy scouts even though he didn't want to go but he's forced to go and since he pees the bed at night he wakes up and like he can't do anything about it he already pees, so he's trying to dry it as best as he can and the bullies get a get a hold of him they start um um i was gonna say drowning him almost drowning him they, they're submerging his head underwater and during one of those um submerging moments he loses his cross he has like a a necklace with a cross on it and he loses it and i think that's such a symbolic moment because it means that at that moment he just lost all faith in in god and jesus he was raised catholic but since like he's been praying since he was a little kid for things he's been begging the lord for things that he has not been granted and I think that that's the symbolism behind it. It's so beautiful because while he's underwater, his face um, morphs into the face of an adolescent, now played by actor Mark andre Grondin, because I'm a very good actor. And the story picks up from there. He's a fan of Bruce Lee. He li likes listening to to David Bowie and other rock songs. There's a, a very cool scene at church where they're just right there. He's like, okay, 
Like, let's see what's going on. And then he starts imagining himself floating above people while the Rolling Stones' sympathy for the devil plays in the background. And they were like, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? If you haven't listened to the song, you're probably like, what is he going, what's going on with him? Um, listen to it. It's very cool. There's a lot of references to music in throughout the film. Like, for example, look at his shirt. I don't know if you could see it, but that's Janis Joplin right there. They're also listening to... Um, Jefferson Airplane, White Rabbit, while they're eating, and while he's telling his family that he's not gonna go anywhere, he's he doesn't want to go to to camp with the other boys because he's gonna have to sleep there. And um, obviously, his father did that because he thinks that he thinks that he just needs to be around more guys so that he could pick up on their ways. He complains to his um wife constantly. He's like, "Why did you make? What did he do to him to make him that way?" There's actually a scene where they're returning a, a little stroller. Because he asked for a stroller and his mom bought it for him. And he's like, I don't want people like making fun of him. Take that back. It's not up to him to decide what he's going to get as a gift. He's like, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, every time it's his birthday since he was born on Christmas, he gets like the biggest one, but he never really gets what he wants. His father always gives him musical instruments, even though he does, he's not interested in that. Um, there's a little girl, Michelle, that's like his best friend growing up. And there's um, a moment where... She goes into the room and she starts wanting to make out with him. By then, though, they had already experienced a, a Christmas. Zach, I mean, with his family. All his family comes over since his, his birthday and a holiday. And his cousin has um, a new boyfriend and they, dan they dance mambo together. And the moment that he lays out, he's like... It's like a very, very, very funny scene. Um, so he takes a liking to him. They go out and they do this thing called shooting. They're in the inside a car and shooting is basically when you get like a, a cigarette or um, something and you put it backwards so that you blow out and the smoke goes into the other person's mouth so you have to be really close together like this close together so that's a very intimate moment right there in my opinion anyway he cannot get his eyes off of this guy and when Michelle comes over, they're talking about, oh, your your cousin's a slut and this and that. She's dumb. Stuff like that. She's jealous, obviously. And she tries making out with him and he, he rejects her. So she storms off. And his dad is outside and he, he, he just thinks that it's because he tried to make a move on her. Which is the complete opposite. Um, there's a moment where... He goes into a car with a classmate that's not even his friend. His name is, they call him Toto the Weirdo. And they're inside and they're masturbating. And his father catches him right as they're coming out. He's um, zipping his pants up. So he takes, he's very mad. He screams at him and um, berates him for it. And his mom says, let him explain, let him explain. But he knows that he's um, a liar. He calls him a liar because when he was little, his father's a very big Patsy Klein fan. So... He breaks his vinyl record when he says something mean to to Zach when he was little and he doesn't accept it until he's like his legs are shaking. So he knows like, like I said, Zach like a power struggle, but not really a power struggle at that moment because he's a child. But he just wants to, you know, to be treated with kindness and um, respect. But he takes him to a psychologist and um, he's talking there. He's like. I don't have to be here. I'm not like them. Like, do you see me talking with Liz? Do you see feathers on my head or me jumping around like like a fairy? He's like, that's a the psychologist. That's a very interesting idea you have of homosexuals. And he's like, yeah, well, they all end up like that anyway. Um, he tells them that he was just there to warm up because it was really cold outside. And when he goes outside, his dad asks him, so what did he say? He's like, well, he said that like subconsciously, I did that on purpose so that you could find out <laughs> so that he wouldn't have to hide it anymore and that he could just, um, you know, come to terms with it. He's like, you don't believe that shit, do you? And he's like, nope, I don't. I mean, he does, you know, but he says no to to his father. And um, literally, oh my gosh, like I, I, I went through the same thing. So it's, ah, ah let, let, let's keep going. The memories. Raymond, his brother, let's talk a little bit about the brothers. So he's the little guy, right? Ivan, um, he doesn't really have much to do with the film other than the fact that Zach wanted a girl and he got him instead. But he plays the role of like, you know, the the younger sibling, the whole, that, that type of thing. This is Christian. I think his name is Christian. 
he's a sports guy he's always farting and that's kind of like his personality you know very rough um this is antoine sorry for that I didn't mean to stick my middle finger out <laughs> this is antoine he's uh, a smart guy and he's always reading everything even like the behind of a, a ketchup bottle he's reading everything and anything that he could get his eyes on this is raymond raymond is um the bad guy he does drugs and sleeps with a lot of women even though he does have one solid girlfriend that that actually manages to stay with him for most of the most of the movie and there's a scene where his brother is getting married and so they're having this celebration at a place and in comes Zach's cousin with her boyfriend, the dancer, because she broke up with him. And then, oh, well, before I get to that, Zach goes out to find his cousin because she he knows where, where she hangs out and she likes to roller skate with her boyfriend. But he finds out that she actually broke up with him. So he's she's with another guy. He doesn't really like him. So he storms off in his little bike, motorcycle. And he's like, if I could cross the light on red, then I won't be this way anymore. And he doesn't, he crashes. So he, <laughs> um, that didn't work out. Now, like fast forward to the celebration, like I was saying, the, the wedding party. He goes outside because he sees his, um, his cousin and her boyfriend. And he, they're like, hey, you want to go out for a smoke? And only they want to go out. So the two guys go out in a car and they're doing the, the thing, I think is shooting or something like that, that I told you about earlier. And one of the, guys invited to the party sees that and takes it that he was making out with him so he goes inside and makes fun of him with other people in the at the party and his brother overhears him so he starts fighting them and then his dad takes him out um takes zach out and is yelling at him like why did he do it he's like why do i get in trouble when raymond was the one who started the the fight like i always get in trouble for him he's like just accept that you little liar he was defending you they were they were saying shit about you like why didn't you just say he's like what do you want me to say say it you're you've always been a liar making reference to like the the times that he has lied um when he's getting his revenge and he's like yeah you know what i am gay but nothing happened today something happened but you know when that when that happened because you caught us he's talking about total the weirdo and after that he gets so mad by the way he's not in a relationship with michelle michelle the girl that he didn't like and he just storms off to israel he didn't tell he doesn't tell anyone um but he does send his mom a postcard while he's there because he knows that his mom is a very big fan of and <laughs> not a fan but she's a very um devote christian or catholic you know on the same branch and something that i i really want to touch on real quick is that they take him when he's a little kid to this lady whose name is never mentioned but they call her mrs what's her name tupperware lady <laughs> i think i pronounce it mrs what's her name tupperware lady and um she tells him that she supposedly she's like she's um a psychic she has a gift of some sort she could see things she could heal burns cuts and she tells his mom that in fact he does as um as a matter of fact he does have this gift and he's going to develop it on his own he just needs time to grow she tells him um a little praise that he needs to to do and there's a something very very cool later on when he visits her that he's looking at a a photograph of someone walking in the desert and there are like two sets of footprints on the sand and she says you know the story behind that this guy has always walked with with the lord and he's always seen like um a set of footprints aside from his own so he thinks that he's always with him but when things got really rough he only saw one pair of, of footprints so he tells God why would you leave me in time of need when I need you the most he's like son you know why you're only seeing one set of footprints is because I was carrying you that's a very very nice note that I just wanted to mention real quick and throughout the film like his mom thinks that he has a gift so it's very important something that I could also relate to because some people thought that I had a gift when I was 
when I was younger. I, I didn't have a gift. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I just knew, I listened to a lot of things. And so I knew things that people thought that I didn't know. That's why. Um, anyway, so he's off in Israel. He has this encounter with the guy and nothing big happens. After that, he drops his inhaler because he uses an inhaler and he smokes at the same time. Anyway, he's, he, he starts walking endlessly until he falls he's probably dehydrated the sun is blazing at his skin he's already sunburned and some guys pick him up and save him and that's when he comes back um to find that raymond has overdosed and he's at the hospital he stays over at his parents house he sleeps with his with his brothers and he wakes up in the middle of the night, goes to the living room where his father is that he couldn't sleep as well. And he's telling him, I must have made a mistake, otherwise you and Raymond wouldn't be the way that you are. And I just want to tell you that if you think that you can't change who you are, that's really who you are. And there's nothing that you could do. You have no desire to change then. I just want you to know that I can't accept that. And it's a really, really sad scene because he just leaves. And something that the father doesn't know is that on his trip, he got a Patsy Cline vinyl record, the one that he broke earlier on in the movie, and he replaced it and was planning on giving it to him, I assume. And he gets it, he, he gets really happy, and the next morning it's another very troubling scene because he's listening to the, to the record with headphones on and his mother receives a phone call that his son passed away so you see the joy that he's getting the pleasure that he's getting from listening to that exclusive record nearly exclusive record while his wife is listening to the terrible news they go over by the way the director plays a cameo as a priest in one of the scenes when they come back and um to to mourn um, Raymond's death. His dad is giving all his sons hugs as they leave the house. And when it's time for Zach to leave, probably to never come back, he gives him the tightest hug ever and he cries and he... It's so emotional, such a, such a beautiful, beautiful scene. Ah, I could feel it in my heart. And after that, they, they are shown, well, the character narrates that everything is going well with them. It's not easy for his parent to accept like guys in the house, but he's still open to it and he eventually did. And they never talked about it or Patsy Klein ever again. They go out to get fries and drive along, just the two of them, which is something that I remember when I watched the movie, I probably cried for like three hours straight. I'm not exaggerating. I was trying to write a song because of how sad it made me feel. Sometimes happy endings are sadder to me than sad endings because I kind of just hope that some <laughs> I kind of hope that someday that could happen to me but yeah it's the movie was insanely relatable the music David Bowie they played David Bowie Space Oddity amazing White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane like I mentioned before they play on um, music um this is I don't know if I mentioned it's a Canadian film the the movie is in French, but it obviously has subtitles, and I remember watching it once in, in Spanish. So they do have translations and dubbings. Um, what um, There's um, another singer, Charles Andervu, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's a legend, beautiful, beautiful voice. It, um, the Mambo song that they, I think is by Perez Prado, I think. Ah, the music is just amazing. It's really fitting. Um, a lot of, of fun facts. The director's son, the young... It, blah. Let me gather my thoughts. The director's son plays a part in the movie as the young Zach. His name is Emily Vallee, I think. And he didn't actually really want to do it. But as far as like... Um, in um, a little behind the scenes, he's like, It's not a democracy at my house. <laughs> it's a dictatorship. And it's really cute the way that he worked with them. He made him memorize all the lines and practice them over and over and over again. He would do it. He would interpret them and then let his son copy him and just go over and over and over. It's beautiful. Um, Zach, the older the older actor that played Zach, Mark andre Grandin, had a lot of training. Like He said martial arts, um, getting a permit for the motorcycle and everything. Um, 
and he had already worked with uh, John Mark Vallee before when he was 11 years old so it wasn't a new experience a completely new experience working with him he said that Mark Andre said that the casting was mainly based off of their personality so that they fit the characters that they were playing and it shows because you believe it 100% there are films films that I like that I enjoy and that I respect where you see the actor that's like, oh, that's his cue, three, two, one, action. Oh, how could you do that, John? But this movie is so real and so raw in that sense. I'm, this is Canadian, right? I live in the United States and I'm Mexican. But still this movie, it feels like it's my life. It feels like it's me or it feels like it's happening right in front of my eyes. It doesn't feel like it, they're reading off a script and you're probably thinking that's what all actors should do they should but a lot of the commercial movies are not like this the mainstream successful box office hits are not like this they're not this movie is so great it had amazing reviews it had a um it garnered a bunch of of awards very well deserved awards but i did read some criticism for example the fact that Zack's character doesn't have the development like other coming of age films do and that they just go over unnecessary things like the religion aspect of it all and how he contradicts himself and and stuff don't really fit in like you're just like thrown a lot of things that don't really need to be thrown in a like just a short amount of time because they feel like they elongated the movie but they didn't have to if they focus on other things but I am so glad they did it the way they did I have one thing to say about that when you don't share the same background when you don't have the same experiences for example I was raised Catholic and I I went through like probably 95% if not more of the things that he went through honestly like it was I could identify with him so much and the scenes that they chose to 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 film they are the appropriate films the for, sorry the appropriate scenes to film they are there for a reason I dislike it so much when they go off into other things and they're talking about things that I can't relate to this didn't do that this followed him it was his story you get to see the other characters you get an idea of what they are who they are but they don't derail so much into that because they want to focus on him hey from like this movie also uses a lot of CGI a lot of special effects and it's just beautiful beautiful the way that they did it from the opening shot where he's still in the womb that's CGI and I was gonna say obviously but not obviously because nowadays we have like you could put cameras in there like who knows they use it for the ring the smoke ring that he shoots he learned it from his father they use it from um, for the Israel scene where they fast forward, they zoom into the desert from the place that he was staying at. They also use it for the time that he was talking to, to his classmates and there's a reflection on his glasses. There's a lot of special effects, but it's not overdone, contrary to popular, popular belief. You could use um, special effects without abusing it. The green screen is not your enemy, it is your friend. But like I said, this movie is marvelous, everybody involved. You know why this film is called Crazy? Because it's the initial of the initials of the kids' names. For example, Christian, Raymond, Antoine, Zachary, and Yvonne. And his this is the title of a song by um Patsy Klein because his father is a is a huge fan of Patsy Klein, so that's why he named it like that, which is very a very funny thing there's a lot of funny scenes like the dad complaining to the mom about him not um like how could gay people like stick their thing into other people's butts and like stuff like that and she's like well you have a, a very short memory he's like oh we only did it once and he's like nope I remember how many times we did it <laughs> this is something like that it's very f it has a lot of funny moments um, the movie was well shot, well written, it's just amazing. He has a scene in the snow where he's like, if I could make it home without... And that's what critics don't, un some critics, some, few, don't understand. They're like, why would he have to do all these supernatural feats? You don't get it, but I used to do that as well. Like, you know, like imagine there are four blocks in the asphalt. You had to jump the four blocks and you would get whatever 
you want it the most. You could, if you could hold your breath underwater for more than whatever seconds, then you would um, become blank. In this case, straight. Um, a lot of people don't know that because you never went through that, but it doesn't mean that those are like superfluous um, scenes or, or pieces of information. I think that um, that it was um, it was a very good idea to incorporate that because it's his constant struggle to be somebody that he's not. Um, everybody did a fantastic job. The mom, the the dad, who always likes to sing his little care. Um, it's not karaoke, but he likes to sing along to the track. Gosh, everyone in the movie is just so amazing. These films comes come once in a lifetime. It's amazing. I love it. I could identify with it a hundred percent. I can't really. Um, I don't know how long this has been going, but I there's a lot of information, a lot of funny scenes. I am begging you, please watch it. I mean, obviously, if you're interested in the genre and these type of films, you're missing out if you don't. It's great. It's fun. It's funny. It's heartfelt. Um, it leaves a very good message of acceptance. And overall, the, um, the quality of the film is just beautiful. I was I remember the first time I watched it I kind of got it um I wasn't really considering it to be so amazing I was enjoying myself but it was after thinking about everything because it's kind of a hard pill to swallow I'm not the type of people that watch a movie unless it's very simple and very um made in a very simplistic way I can't always grasp everything and then when I started thinking about it, that's when I started crying for like three hours and then I watched it again, I watched it some other times. But yeah, um, my rating, obviously, it's a 10 out of 10. It's just so good. Like I said, I recommend it. Please watch it if you're interested in these type of films. Um, I really, I, as always, I'm gonna give credit to to the people involved in the film that are listed here on the description below as well as my little summaries I hope that someday I build enough memory to mention all the actors at least the main ones because um, they deserve it they deserve it they did amazing I am very pleased with this one like I said 10 out of 10 you can't go wrong with crazy Thank you for watching.